be aware of your surroundings but uh let's get into this man this is an interesting one very disturbing to messed up man messed up shit you you had a run-in with somebody one of the world's most evil killers the state park it was ken lake state park uh i had a run-in with uh john wayne gacy over the course of six years john wayne gacy kidnapped tortured and brutally murdered 33 young men and boys in and around Chicago, Illinois. The first time you met him was at your home. I was um, about a month or a couple weeks from being 15. Mm. At one point, chillingly, he says to the detectives, you know, clowns can get away with murder. Well, never was a true word said. What happened? Uh it was a typical hot August night. I was at the state park and uh, I'd been playing with some of the tourist kids. I'd ridden my bike across the golf course uh, over to the park property. I was sitting in the lobby. Uh, he walks up to me and he said, uh, are you a local? And I said, yes. He said, what's there to do around here? And he's dressed in a leisure suit, a black and brown leisure suit. I was in orange swim truck with a towel around my neck. Uh, I said, do you like fishing? Do you like boating? It's a resort. Uh, it's outdoor paradise, honey. He said, no. And then uh, he, I started to get up. He said, what's your deal around here? And I said, are you into hiking or sailing or camping? And he said, no. And then I started asking him questions. I said, uh, where are you from? He said, I'm from Chicago. I'm visiting some people down here. And I said, where? He said, Jonathan Creek. Well, I knew that was about four hours of water. Even this conversation is sketchy, man. A so grown man to get up again, in his 30s talking to a 14-year-old. So I, I went ahead and stood up, and I was starting to get annoyed. And uh, I said, are you looking for liquor, or are you looking for, for women? I said, this is kind of a family-style resort. And um, as I started to walk off, he said, hey, would you like to have a beer with me? And I said, sure. A beer? You could just offer a beer to a kid in public? Nowadays, you try that shit, you're getting caught on camera. You're going to prison. You're screwed, bro. And where are the parents, though? I guess his mom was at home or something. It, it gets to the part when, when he tells his mom, but strange strange back in the day it was weird you could get away with a lot of sick shit man so we walked down to his room it was the sixth room on the left uh, i knew most of the workers at the he was office. preying on but him bro when this guy was 14 this guy was getting preyed on by this dude i had keys to the uh fuck the man room where i could get a fresh towel if i needed it um, since my mother worked there I was a fixture, really, on the property. So we go down to his room. Um, he opens the door, the old-fashioned keys back then. I walk in. When I was that age, long ago in the 1915, 1915 when I was just a boy, <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust anyone like that, man. Stranger danger. You got to know that in school, and usually by your parents. It's rough to say because when you're a kid, you like to see the best of people. Even nowadays, I like to see the best of people. That's just how I was raised, to respect and be nice to your elders. But when some weird stuff is going on like this, you can see the red flags and you got to get out of there, y'all. I take a couple steps. He walks in behind me and he, he takes his hand and he grazes my behind, my butt. And I thought, that was a little weird. Uh, Oh my god, this just gets worse, man. All right, your ass just got grazed. I could think of around that age, though, this would be a rough situation to be in. You, you're walking in, right? Your ass gets grazed. I thought maybe that was a mistake. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing, man? You just touched my fucking ass, dog. I will fuck you up. You bitch-ass fucking... Right, which was a typical hotel room, and the bathtub was completely pulled up filled to the top with ice. And uh, there's two chairs, two beds. The TV was in between the chairs. 
I took a seat at the first chair. And then he goes uh, to a cooler and brings back a beer. It was a Wiedemann. You see a fucking, when you walk in, you see a, a tub, a tub, bro, full of ice. What the hell is going on, bro? And then he goes over and shuts the curtains. He walks past me. Um, this would have been the uh, picture glass window here. This would have been the restroom. As he goes past me, he locks the door. And now I'm starting to feel, well, that's a little weird too. Uh, so he takes a suitcase out, sets it on the bed, opens it up, it's full of books. There's probably a magazine. There's probably 50 or 60 magazines there. Um, I'm, I reach over, start fanning through them, and I didn't see anything that I thought I would like. So he grabs a couple and just hands them to me. I sit back and I start thumbing through them. They're, they're all boys. If I was him when I was that age, I would have been like, hey, dude, uh, I'll be right back. And I would have fucking ran. I would have ran my ass out of there and never looked back. Never looked back, bro. Fuck that. So at this time when I'm going through the, uh, the magazines, he's back in the restroom. He's, I hear the faucet come on and off. Next time he comes out, he's got a towel wrapped around his neck. And uh, at the, that time when he came out, he locked the dead bones on the door. It was different. You know, I, would, I wouldn't say back in the day, but, you know, back in the day. <laughs> Usually right now, nowadays in 2023, you don't, kids know better. People around that age, I knew better not to ever go with anyone, even if they're offering a beer, some alcohol and stuff, unless you're with some friends, you do not go anywhere with anyone. So now things start to, slow motion kicks in on me. I think this is not right. Something's wrong. I'm, I'm in a bad situation here. So I don't expect anyone to be doing this this these days, but if you're going with an older person and you're that age, you are a dumb child. Your parents didn't teach you shit. Don't be fucking hanging out with older people like that. I was starting to panic a little bit. Uh, he comes back through and I said, hey, there's, there's just boys in these books. And he says, I got something else you might like. So he goes to the other side of the bed, puts another suitcase up on the bed, opens it up. It's full of shackles and handcuffs and chains. And inside my mind, I'm thinking, this is, this is bad. I got to get out of here. If I ran into this fuck, when I was 14, I would probably be screwed. Like this guy, I'd be screwed. But nowadays, I run into someone like this. I'm prepared, baby. I'm fucking prepared. So I take my beer, it was about half full. I set it down to my left heel. And he, I said, the next time he goes to the bathroom, I'm gonna take this cooler and I'm either gonna throw it through the window or I'm gonna move it or I can get away. So he goes in the bathroom again and his uh, demeanor, his, uh, his eyes start to get a little squinty. Um, he was changing. He was, he was looking at me when he, he was sneering at me when he would walk by. And I'm a pretty big kid for 15, but I, I knew I didn't have enough. Uh, this was a powerful, powerfully built man. And so as soon as he goes in the bathroom and the faucet comes on, I grab the cooler. I take it over into the far corner, uh, right by the window. And when he comes back out, after he would mentioned the, the chains and the, the shackles and all that stuff, I said, do you have any snacks? And while he's looking at me, I kick my beer over. And he, was, he had kind of uh, disoriented for a second. He said, no, I don't have any snacks. And I said, can I have another beer? So he looks where the cooler was. He didn't see the cooler. And he goes, starts looking for the cooler. Well, he goes, he walks past me and around both beds and I hit the door. 
and I'm hitting, I'm unlocking, I'm unlocking the chain, I'm unlocking the deadbolt, and I open the door, and just as I step out, he grabs me, and he hits, he, he grabs at me. He, he hits me a couple of times, but I just kept backpedaling, because I didn't have on a shirt for him to grab. I didn't have any shoes. So I back on out of there, walk past the desk clerk, Ella, and I get, get on my bike, and I'm a little shaken, but I didn't know who he was. I just figured it was some weird, weird guy. Um, but I had been around enough men with my father's um, backroom gambling establishment that I knew that was that was not normal. This, when you watch this, it makes you think of being self-aware, um, being careful, and knowing who you're talking to, man. Because you never know, someone that just walks past you or someone you maybe have a little conversation with so you say hi to them they could be a serial killer man who knows how much serial killers i've met and i didn't even know it but i'm, I'm smart about things I, i've learned to be self-aware i've learned to i've learned just to be careful with certain people you know with people's body languages and how to i could i could you know protect myself I'm good at that. I'm good at protecting myself.